All right, so uh, this program today is uh, being smart about our goals um, in the Office of Student Development. So I thank everybody for participating in this program. Another short lunchtime program that I think is helpful, um, uh, things for us to think about in our leadership roles and just kind of planning um, and talking about how we actually set up our goals. So, you know, first and foremost, um, you know, when I talk about goals and goal setting, uh, I'm talking about it from this framework of a goal being the result or achievement towards which effort is directed and aim or an end, right? So again, pretty basic, um, and then establishing steps to meet the objective of the individual um, or firm. So um, I think it's important, we often have goals, but we um, don't often format them in a way and actually plan in a way for us to, um, find the best way possible for us to actually meet those goals. So that's what I'm gonna talk about a little bit today um, in that context. So what I want you to do right now is kind of a, a brief exercise just to get us started, is take one minute and write down a goal that you currently have for yourself uh, or your fraternity or sorority or your student organization, right? So just take one minute and write down one goal that you currently have. All right, so we're going to come back to that in a few moments. Um, I just wanted you to have an opportunity to kind of write down whatever goal it is you wanted to come up with. Um, you know, how you format, it's not important right now, but we're going to talk about that momentarily. So um, I saw this I saw this earlier today, actually, and I added it to this presentation because I thought it was a really cool, um, you know, kind of example that we've seen in popular culture. But if anybody has ever seen the original um, Alice in Wonderland uh, cartoon film, I forget what year it came out, um, but there's kind of this exchange between um, Alice and the Cheshire Cat, right? Um, Alice says, would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? Uh, the Cheshire Cat responds, that depends a good deal on where you want to get to. I don't care too much. Then it doesn't, doesn't much matter which way you go. So as long as I get somewhere, oh, you're sure to do that if only you walk long enough. Um, I thought this was a really cool way to think about how we set our goals and how we actually plan to reach those goals. Um, so um, with that being said, I'm gonna to present to you seven steps to effective goal setting. The first thing I want you to think about is defining your goal. So here are some questions you need to ask yourself. What is it exactly that you want to accomplish? What achievement would be worthy of your best effort? So it's not just about what the goal is you wanna accomplish, but are you actually coming up with a goal that you know is going to represent what you are able to accomplish with your individual talents and resources. What would you attempt if you knew it was impossible to fail? I think that question in itself brings up an entire uh, array of the way we think about the goals that we set, right? Um, sometimes we often create goals uh, with, um, with those resources in mind, with uh, kind of those things that we think we can accomplish. But if we were able to remove any of those barriers, you know, if you knew it was impossible to fail, what goals would we have? I think sometimes it's important to think about goals from both of those standpoints. What's actually achievable and, you know, what might be achievable if we had some of those barriers removed, right? Uh, I think sometimes it's really important to think big. What would you do if you knew this was your very last chance, okay? Um, think about that in the context of if you're a senior in college, you're one of the leaders in your organization, right? This is your last chance to make a, a big impact, something that you can leave behind in terms of your legacy. So what would you do if you knew this was your very last chance? 
right? So I think these questions are good to ask yourself when you're kind of thinking about your goals. Step two, you have to think about where you are right now. Carefully examine where you are in terms of your goal. Are you continuing your Alice experience, right, to go back to, to that cartoon? Are we kind of thinking about how we're planning on our goals or are we just trying to get somewhere, right? Or do you have a plan to actually reach that next level? Are you willing to do things you may not want to do in order to reach your goal? Within reason, of course, right? So that's important to think about too. Oftentimes we create goals and have goals in mind um, that are within our comfort zones. But if we're thinking big, if we want the best for ourselves, for our organization, whatever it is we're making goals for, it's important to get out of our comfort zone. Step three, in order to get where you wanna go, you have to know how to get there. So I've already said the word planning probably 50 times in the past five minutes, but that's a really important step. I think oftentimes we come up with goals, but we don't put in the work to actually figure out how it is that we're gonna get there. So this might take doing your research, right? Um, you know, if you're, if you're planning, for example, if you're fraternity or sorority and your goal is to uh, be chapter of the year, well, how is it that one becomes chapter of the year? Whether it be from your national organization or from Stockton, right? What are the, what's the criteria for that anyway? So you have to do your research. You have to ask those questions, right? And then it requires planning. So what are your strengths and weaknesses? And what sort of situations do you thrive or deteriorate? So it's also important to think about that too. So whether it's yourself or your organization, right? What are the strengths that you have? What are the weaknesses that you have? What are the things that you need to work on? Where, where are the areas that you, you try to succeed, but your, your chapter yourself, you always continue to fail in that area, right? It's important to uh, reflect um, and to be self-aware, right? When we're coming up with goals and planning for them. So be honest about what you need to do. Step four, formulate an improvement plan. So we can look and see what other organizations do. We can look at always and see what other people do. We can always compare, right? And to some extent that's good, but to another, right? We need to realize that one size does not fit all, um, that we can't just follow 100% in other organizations or other people's footsteps, right? So you need to tailor a plan that is for you, that's gonna work for you where you know you can succeed. Um, do you need to work daily, weekly, bi-weekly on your task? Only you know what you can accomplish and what is going to work for you, right? So make sure you tailor that plan for yourself. And in terms of goals, you always need to write them down. If you're working with an organization, you're working with a group of people um, in particular, I think it's much more important in that context to write these goals down, right? Put them in a place where you can remind yourselves of those goals, you can update yourselves of those goals, you can reflect on them as a group so you don't forget about them, right? And it's something that you always use in every step of the way. So this is where I wanna talk about being smart about your goals. So hopefully at some point you've learned about SMART goals. Uh, SMART is a system of uh, creating goals um, that are much more um, formulated uh, and formal to be able to make sure that whatever it is that your goal is, is both specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So that's where we get the, the term SMART, right? So specific, what is exactly do you want to do? What is it that you want to accomplish, very specifically? Measurable, how will you know when you've reached it? A good example of this, so you're recruiting for your organization. Would it be measurable to say that we want our organization to be larger? Well, what is larger? There's a difference between your goal being we wanna be larger versus we want to recruit 10 more members this semester. That's actually measurable. You either hit 10 and you don't. Larger could be two, could be four, could be eight, could be 50, right? and it could vary. So you want it to be measurable. Achievable is in your power to accomplish it, right? You wanna make sure that when you create goals, it's something that you have the resources for, 
um, it's attainable. It's something that you can accomplish in, in that period of time and the resources that you have. Is it realistic? Can you realistically achieve it? If your goal is to uh, be the president of the United States next week, that's not very realistic, right? So when you're creating your goal, you wanna make sure it's something that is, is actually tangible, something that you can, can accomplish. And then timely, when exactly do you wanna accomplish it? Again, going back to the, the idea of, I want my organization to be larger. Well, do you want it to be larger by the end of the semester? Or are you just saying you want it to be larger and 10 years from now, that's fine, right? An example of a SMART goal would be, we want to specific, recruit 10 members, which is measurable. I think we can accomplish that and it's realistic. And we want to do it by the end of the semester. So it's timely, right? We wanna recruit 10 more members by the end of the semester. That would be a SMART goal, something that's easy, tangible, you can actually measure it, right? Try to stay away from the fluffy, okay? Uh, we want our members to, um, you know, we want to build a, a better sisterhood for our organization. Well, what does that actually mean? How do you measure that, right? So that goal might sound nice, but how are you going to accomplish that? How can you put that in terms where you can actually measure it and you can measure your success as you move forward? Maybe that means you break that down into saying, we're going to do this type of event once a week. We're gonna do this activity once a week. Um, we're gonna assess our sisters to see um, how they feel about X, Y, and Z, right? We actually do those things, those things are measurable. But to say, you know, the fluffy idea of we're gonna build a stronger sisterhood is not really a measurable thing that you can, it's not tangible, right? So again, making SMART goals is about those specifics. So as long as you can answer those questions, S-M-A-R-T, you should be able to, uh, be, you know, you're heading in the right direction, All right? Make and work on short-term goals. So I have the example here, if you look at the far end, to win chapter of the year. Well, how are you gonna do that? There's probably gonna be steps along the way in order for you to achieve um, that larger goal. The goal that you set up in step one, may take a longer time to reach, perhaps a full semester, a year or more. Set short-term goals to keep you motivated throughout this time. Achieving these goals will give you feedback on your progress towards your ultimate goal. They should be process-oriented and reflect that achieving your goal is an ongoing process. So we're always gonna have that big goal at the end, but what are the small goals that you need to accomplish in order to reach that big goal? So here I provided you an example that I came up with, right? In order to become chapter of the year, Right? You wanna make sure that your chapter has, has strong standards, that you establish and train a standards board, that people are held accountable for those standards, that you make recruitment more values-based, that you improve service and philanthropy numbers, all right? and then you win chapter of the year. Now, I know these are not SMART goals that I just provided you. These are fluffy, so those are bad examples for based on what I just told you, right? but you get the idea. right? It is easy to say you're going to do something. Actually doing it is another story. So number six is you must commit. You need to have a vision for this goal that you're trying to reach and you need to gain buy-in. If it's a personal goal, right? Something that you're trying to work on for yourself, maybe in terms of your leadership or you wanna get better grades or something like that, then the only buy-in you need is your own. But when we're talking about a student organization, right? We're talking about a team, right? In your workforce or, or your athletic team or whatever it might be. You need to get buy-in from everybody involved. So you need to have a shared vision that you can all get behind. And if you have folks in your organization and your fraternity, your sorority that are not buying into that, that idea, then you're going to have problems. So if you're the leader of a fraternity and you want to get your chapter on the right track and you know you want to stop getting in trouble and get your members to not party as much and actually focus on service and philanthropy everyone needs to be behind that if you have naysayers in the organization that are like 
uh, that's not really why I joined this. That's, I know that's why we're here, but you know, I, I'm, I joined for the fun stuff, right? That might sound like a lot of organizations, it's normal, right? How do we get those people to buy in to really understand what it is we're trying to accomplish? And that could be really hard. So I'm not saying that's, that's easy in any capacity. So building buy-in can be an entire other presentation, right? Because um, that's probably one of the hot, hardest parts of being an or, uh, a leader of any organization is getting everyone behind that shared vision, right? It takes getting them excited. It takes having shared goals of where you want to be at the end of this, right? And it takes everyone working together, right? Because if you have one, you know, one uh, rail get pulled out, then the train's going to go off the tracks. So it's also important why, you know, this is why goals need to be attainable and motivational. The motivational piece, right, people are gonna wanna get behind them, they wanna be motivated in order to hit those goals. If you can't get your folks motivated, then it's not gonna work. So you have to understand what motivates the members of your organization as well. And you have to orient the goal around that motivation. I also need to say that balance is important. If you have an organizational goal that you wanna reach and we turn into a dictator mode and get mad when things go off the rails and you know there's barriers in place and people are not buying in right it's not going to help us if you know we we get we get angry and we, we get mad and, and we're just really strict about everything right balance is important it's important sometimes to take a step back refocus right? Reset that vision with the group, you know, to get that buy-in again, right? Balance is important. Number seven, continuously monitor your progress. Is your plan actually working or does it need adjustment? We, we all come up with plans for things. We have steps along the way that we want to reach, but sometimes things change and that's normal. So sometimes you need to reflect on your plan and adjust it as needed, right? Write down your small successes and lessons learned along the way. I think this is extremely important, particularly for organizations that might transition to new officers. There's new people always coming, coming in and going, right? You need to record what it is that you're, you've actually been doing. But you also need to celebrate the small successes you have. Again, you know, you're not gonna become chapter of the year overnight. There's gonna be steps that you have to hit in order to reach that goal. But it's important to also celebrate those small steps along the way, right? I gave that example of those five things that a chapter might need to do in order to reach chapter of the year, right? As you hit each of those and you do a great job, pat yourselves on the back. That's great. But know that there's other steps beyond that. Make a checklist that charts your progress. That's important too. So, I'll give you an example, you know, regarding everything that we're talking about here. I'm actually the national treasurer for my fraternity, and we're working on a project right now. And we just set ourselves out for a six-month timeline in hopes that we will launch this new program on March 1st, right? Um, we have um, benchmarks along the way over the next six months that we hope to hit in order for us to move on to the next step. So. By hitting those benchmarks that we've set out, um, we know where our progress is. Uh, we can celebrate those benchmarks, right? We know that we're moving towards that goal, right? It's important that that big goal always has those little steps on, along the way, because that's how you measure yourself, right? Continue to find new ways to reach your ultimate goal, right? I said sometimes you're gonna need adjusting, and that's perfectly fine. So if you've come up with new ways to do something, perfect, you know, perfect reason to adjust your plan. So you might find something that works better. That's okay. As long as you are still on the path to that ultimate goal, right? So continuously mo monitor your progress. So the last thing I'll kind of talk about is dealing with those roadblocks and challenges. Nothing we do will work without buy-in. I already said that. You're not going to get an entire organization to get behind something, right? Unless everybody is motivated for, um, you know, to reach that goal. You need that shared vision. So when you're actually goal setting, I think it's important that you don't just sit down, uh, you and your vice president or you and your e-board 
you need to really sit down with your entire organization and say, what do we want to get out of this organization? What is the ultimate goal? What do we want to do by the end of this year? And get everyone to be a part of that conversation to build that shared vision. If it's something that's handed down to the organization, then folks are not going to buy in. They're not going to care, right? The idea might sound great, but if it's not something I was a part of creating, I'm, very, I'm much less likely to care about it, even if it might be a good idea, right? So you need everyone to be involved in that conversation. Use positive language. One of the things that always makes us fail is that we ourselves are negative. We're not positive about where we're at as, a, as an organization in terms of our goals or even as an individual, right? It's important to pat ourselves on the back as long as we deserve it. But we need to be positive, right? We hit step one. It's time to get to step two, right? If you fall short of where you want to be on your timeline, still be positive. All right, we did not get to where we wanted to be by this date. Uh, we did not hit this goal, but we're still working strong. So let's keep at it. Right? It's about having that positive attitude. Nobody wants a leader in their organization to be negative, right? Because that negativity is going to spread around the entire organization. Even if inside you feel very negative about a situation, it is your job as a leader to be positive, right? Very important. And don't let your goals control you, right? Organizations are made of people and purpose. If we focus so much on our purpose and we forget that we are people, then we end up alienating members of our organization, angering each other, getting into arguments, right? At the end of the day, we all want the same thing. We all want a positive experience. So it's important not to let our goals control us, right? Our goals are supposed to lead us down a path, but they're not supposed to completely control our being. Be okay with change. I already talked about adjusting. That's okay. Things are going to happen. Nobody expected, right? The next one is life happens. Nobody expected COVID to happen this year. Who knew that we were going to be in the middle of a pandemic, right? Life does happen. We need be, to be okay with change. We're going to have to adjust as needed. It's just the reality, right? And then lastly, as I said, reward yourself along the way. 